different issues in occupational health and safety that are important, but it's easy to forget sometimes occupational cancer because it takes so long to develop. You know, it's, you get exposed now you, and the cancer may develop decades down the line. That makes it hard to identify individual cases of cancer, and yet we know that these cases are continuing to exist and continue to be generated. So we need to really continue to focus our prevention efforts in order to make informed decisions around the prevention of cancer. Now, I've always thought of occupational cancer research as really the front lines of research on environmental effects of things. People who work close and work with different industrial chemicals around different metals or fibers or dust or any number of different things have levels of exposure that are much higher than people would experience in their everyday life. The first chemical carcinogen of any kind that was really identified was soot. And that was identified because uh, of chimney sweeps. Everybody remembers Mary Poppins and the, the children kind of running around the streets with their brooms with the blackened faces and the, the black clothing. Well, what was found was that there's an increased risk of scrotal cancer among uh, chimney sweeps. And it was among these people or these young boys who were employed to kind of sweep the chimneys of fairly rich people in London. Uh, and then when they hit their early adulthood, they developed cancer. And it was a pioneer of cancer research or of really of health research, really, who first identified that relationship, brought it to the attention of authorities, and eventually concern about that led to regulations that restricted the use of boys uh, for the cleaning of chimneys. There are a number of things that we would not describe as an occupational cancer or thought of as being occupational causes of cancer in the past. Certainly the biggest one of those is uh, exposure to work at night. That's been classified as a potential human carcinogen or a probable human carcinogen by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, which is the major organization internationally that classifies what is or is not a carcinogen for regulatory purposes. Shift work involving work during nights and evenings is uh, one of the concerns is that it disrupts circadian rhythms. How does that impact the level of hormones in the body? And we know that hormones influence influence uh, cancer risk. There are a number of different uh, cancers, such as breast cancer and prostate cancer, that are impacted by hormone levels. There are questions about how changes in working at night might impact the immune system and our ability to defend against not just cancer, but other types of diseases. So this is not just a concern restricted to cancer. It's really uh, an area that broadly addresses a number of different health concerns. Other people are concerned about how it disrupts people's lives overall and might make them have really less healthy lifestyles that might contribute. So it's a concern on both different levels. The problem is that we operate on a 24-hour economy and that's you know, almost 20% of the working population of uh, Canada works either evenings or nights or rotating shifts. So it would take a major change in order to, to make that different. So we're trying to focus in on what aspects is it of shift work that we can change that might lower any risks that might be associated with them. There are a number of other causes of cancer that are out there, uh, things like exposure to very fine crystalline silica among people in construction and other industries. We do regulate our pesticides very strongly. So ones that are known to cause cancer, the ones that cause immediate health effects in people, those are regulated out. So we're interested in the long-term health effects of some of these other pesticides that are still being used on places like golf courses. There's been a concern that diesel exhaust increases the risk of cancer, in particular lung cancer. In terms of current burden of cancer, asbestos is the biggest hitter. We have lots of new people who are coming forward with mesothelioma, and uh, lung cancer as well is even more com common among uh, people who would have been exposed to asbestos in the past. Our research program really focuses in three different areas. One is the identification of causes of cancer. Well, Canada in the past was a leader in occupational cancer research. And particularly in Ontario, we had a number of 
really great developments, really important studies that were conducted here in Ontario. And in recent years, that has declined. What we're hoping to do is to build that up again and then to uh, increase Canada's role in doing this. And this is part of an international effort. You know, if we look at the health effect of a chemical here, we hope that the research is also being conducted in other countries for other chemicals that we might be using here as well. So this is part of a coordinated international effort uh, to try to put together you know, what is a research program that really leads to eventually, we hope, to prevention of occupational cancer.